Happy Friday, everyone. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I, there's a lot of stuff going on today. I know. Um, I leave in two days for two weeks to go teach. So um, if you're in any of those in-person classes in Houston or Dallas, um, if you were in Houston, hi, I'm teaching you today. And if you're in Dallas, I'll see you next week. But um, there's, a, there's, like I said, a lot of stuff going on. I'm trying to get these videos done before I leave. And today's I'm super excited about... Um, or this week's I'm super excited about, but so am I next week's. Um, if you follow me on social media, you'll see I've been doing a lot of embroidery the last few days. I've been playing with the twist thread. So I have my few little embroidery projects back there laying on my long arm. Um, that twist thread is fantastic, by the way. It looks great in embroidery. Um, but I'm going to do some free motion quilting on my domestic machine. So um, keep an eye out for those videos coming up. But again, today I'm doing a lot of firsts. I'm a little bit nervous. But if I mess it up, it's okay. I mean, it's just fabric. At the end of the day, it's just quilting. This one's at the end of the day, it's just embroidery. But um, I'm going to be using our Brother Scan and Cut. So um, first first off, shout out to Stitch House. Thank you so much for the machine. Um, ben is loving it, and I think I might start loving it after this. But um, it's... I. I'm always teaching there. I see it working. And finally, I was like, I have to have this. So um, I got a scan and cut from um, Stitch House in uh, Plano, Texas. And I think shopstitchhouse.com. But um, like I said, Ben usually uses this. This is going to be my first time. And I don't even know if he's cut fabric yet. I know he made, he's made some little paper things. But I'm going to be using the scan and cut. I'm using Terial Magic. And today I'm working on embroidery still. And I'm going to be using uh, or making the Main Street uh, or... I'm not even making it. I'm going to be cutting the pieces out for the Main Street uh, Celebration Bench Pillow. This is a Kimberbell design. I um, am a big fan of Kimberbell stuff. I am a Kimberfella, you know. So if you're on Facebook, they're Kimberbellas and Fellas. So thank you for including us. But um, when you buy these, these designs, they come with an SVG file. And I was all excited. I'm like, no cutting. Ooh up, ooh up. You know, because cutting all those pieces, like, it's... It takes forever. So um, I opened the SVG file and realized that there's still a little bit of cutting because you have to cut out the pieces to then put on to the mat for this to cut. And um, there were three separate files. So on each file, you had maybe a window piece and a roof piece and a um, like a foundation piece. But I'm like, I don't want to do like I end up cutting all those pieces the same. So I took those files into Designer, because Designer can open and save as an S SVG file, which is what the Scan and Cut uses. Um, so I took those files into Designer, rearranged them, and saved them as individual parts. So I took all of the windows for all of the projects and saved it as one part, and took all of the foundation and all of the roof pieces. So everything that came out of the same color, I took out. So um, I ended up, I think I had eight cuts. So this is my mat. I still have to um, do like the Tyrael Magic um, stuff for this and I'll show you how to do that. Again, it's my first time. I did reach out to Michael, the social quilter, and that's with an S-E-W on Instagram. You should totally follow him. He does some really fun stuff, but um, he's used Tyrael Magic. So I'm like, what, what are my hints? What are my tips and tricks? So um, I'm going to be using Terial Magic on this. And if you don't know what Terial Magic is, it's a starch-like product that basically s saturates the fiber so much, it makes it like a piece of paper. So um, so then I'm going to be able to use my high-tack scan and cut mat to have the scan and cut cut everything out. So I ended up having eight cuts instead of like, this is my window fabric, I would have had um, three cuts just in here. And then this is my, are my like house units, there were three cuts here. There were two cuts out of this one, there were four cuts out of this one. So instead of having to cut all these little tiny pieces, I set it up in my designer and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. And then um, saw how big I needed that piece, logged it in my notebook, and then cut my pieces out and I'm going to be able to put the mat in once and have it cut all my pieces for all my colors. I'm just fingers crossed it works because again, it's, uh, if it doesn't, I'm still going to put the video out because at least we know designer works. So, um, yeah, stick along. I'm going to turn the camera around and start here so I can show you how I save those SVG files. But what this means is that any design in Pro Stitcher 
you can save as an SVG file. And if you have an electronic cutter, you can cut those out. I mean, game changer. Any type of applique, I mean, it's it's insane. You can turn it into applique. Here, cut your applique pieces. And then have Pro Stitcher stitch them down. Like, there's a video coming because I just thought of it. I've got to put it on my list. So um, stick around. We will uh, jump into designer or... You know what? Before we go into designer, why don't we just get some material magic? Because this, um, he said, just follow the directions on the box um, or on the um, container. But I need to spray and saturate the fabric. And then I need to hang it up for about 10 to 15 minutes to dry. And then I have to press all the all the rest of it out, which is why I have my little um, mini Oliso here. And so I was told put it in a bag. So this is just a Ziploc bag. I will get piece one. I probably should get something to put this on so I don't get it all over my stuff. Um, how about another bag? Oh, I have an idea. All right, so I'm getting the bag and I just have this weird, I just, you know, I order stuff. So I'm gonna lay my saturated pieces out on this and then I made a makeshift clothespin or a clothesline and then I'll hang them up on that to dry. But um, just so they're not laying on my table because this will give you some residue. I should take my rings off, right? Um, we'll give you some residue. So um, he did say, make sure you wash your hands and then apply some lotion because it will dry them out. So I'm on spray. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I think I'm on spray. Oh, there we go. So the idea is that you get the whole thing nice and saturated. And if it's in a bag, you can just zip it up and kind of use it later. So I'm squeezing it a little bit. And it's like when you make chicken, um, fried chicken, you have to keep one hand nice and good and the other one you can have all goopy. Oop, let's see. A little bit didn't take. I'll squeeze it. And so I'm going to continue to do these pieces and then um, we'll uh, bring you back and show you how to do save that SVG stuff. I mean, I, I don't know if you can tell, I'm kind of excited. So stick around, we'll see you in a second. All right, everyone, here we are. We are in Pro Stitcher Studio. So um, just the normal Pro Stitcher screen, nothing too, um, too different. This is what we're used to. So um, I've already opened two of the files. So one of the files was called SVG KD5101 Farmhouse. Um, and this was that farmhouse file. So this has a roof. It has whatever this thing's called. I can't think of it. Three windows, a door, and the house itself. And so this was um, different cuts, all different cuts. Now here's our fire station and the fire station has our, our firehouse, windows, this little piece that's gonna go in the middle of the fire station, um, this little piece that's gonna come in here, a fire truck, some foundation pieces and a garage door. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna open the other files, so a file open, um, know where you saved your files. So I saved my files um, on my taco drive, under embroidery, under Kimberbell, under Main Street, SVG files. And um, the files I'm creating, I'm going to put under D designer created because I'm creating them in designer. But I'm going to open the general store. So this, the general store has two roof pieces, the house, um, the foundation, some windows, and a door. So what I did is I was looking at the, I just went through the instructions and I said, okay, um, the first instruction I saw was for a brown fabric and it needed the roof parts. So I'm going to create a new, um, a new workspace for me. So here's my new workspace and I'm going to start with my farmhouse and I'm going to pick up that roof piece and I'm just going to control C or I could right click and select copy. And then now I'm going to go over to design four and I'll right click and hit paste. So here's my first roof piece. 
The fire station had no roof pieces, but the general store had two. So this and this are both roof pieces, and I can drag and drop a box to select those two. Right click and um, copy, and then come over to design four, right click and hit paste. So if I were creating this and we were doing this normally, I would have one big piece of fabric that would go over these two pieces and then it would stitch it down and I have to go in and trim the stuff. And um, same thing with this triangle. When I was making that unit, I would have one big rectangle and I, um, it would stitch it down and then I'd go in and trim. So it's uh, kind of like uh, stitching down and then trimming around that applique. So, um, or raw edge applique because it's gonna satin stitch over it. But in this case, this triangle kind of fits up in here. So what I did when I made this design is I moved this piece out of the way. They're all gonna be out of the same fabric. I tucked this triangle up in here and then I moved this back and I gave, I, I left like a quarter inch because again, this is my first time doing this with the scan and cut. But now I'm gonna be able to, uh, once, I, once I got them all lined up and then I took them to my zero, zero. So here's my zero line horizontally, my zero line vertically, and I put it here to help, to give me a visual, um, a visual um, like idea of how big I needed to cut my fabric. So if I bring it over and I just, pop it over so it has a quarter inch all around. Um, I need it to be, this is, each of these dash lines are an inch. So that's one, two, three and a half inches by one, two, three, four, five. And I would do maybe five and a half inches. I also have my ruler at the top so I can just kind of look straight up and say, oh, there's five and a half and here's three and a half. So I'm gonna get all of this out of a three and a half inch cut instead of having to basically have a three and a half or a three and a half by five and a half inch cut instead of having to do a three and a half by five and a half inch cut just for one and then coming back for the other one and doing maybe a two and a half by um, three and a half for this little triangle. And then I went file, save as, or I just hit save because it doesn't have a name yet. I opened up my designer created and this one is my roof parts and they're going to be brown. So I saved it as a C2S file, as the designer type file. And then once that was saved, I could say, or I could um, select all my units, come to my preview tab, apply stitches, because you have to apply stitches for that SVG file. File, save as, and now I can click down and save it as a SVG and click save. And you'll see, that this is what I did for all of my uh, for all of my units, all of my color cuts. So I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't need to save that. I'm gonna and then so this one would have been saved. I would say file new. Here's my next design, and I just go to my next piece. Maybe this one was um, the foundation, or that let's say it's the house itself. So here's my house. I could right click, copy, bring my house over here and paste. So there's one house. The fire station doesn't have anything. It doesn't have the house, but it does have this garage door that's the same color. So I'm gonna right click and copy and then come over to my design five and paste. And then I'll go to the general store and here's my house, right click, copy, design five, right click, paste. And then I could just line them up how I wanted them and again, I'm trying to do it where I can save, get everything in the least amount of fabric as possible. So this is gonna make a really long cut. And this other piece is not big. I mean, this can kind of tuck up in here. So instead of having it cut rectangly, rectangular, or um, horizontally rectangular, I'm going to my modify tab. I can rotate this. And now I don't have to cut as much fabric. I'm all about saving fabric when I can. I'm a, I don't always pat myself on the back, but I am a good cutter with minimal waste. It's something I always kind of strive to do. So now I'm gonna get all of this out of a piece. Let's put this at my zero, zero. If I can find it, there we are, zero, zero. And I can hit my space bar. It's gonna line my everything back up and I can get it all out of a five by seven cut. I might do five and a quarter. 
Uh, it's that easy. So I went through and then I do, again, file, save. Oh, in my designer created, this one was buildings and I saved it as a C2S file. And then I selected them all. Preview, apply stitches. And you'll see that you get jumps once you do that. File, save as, click my drop down, and here is my SGV file. Click save. And you'll see I have my buildings, my um, farmhouse door, my um, fire building, and the fire truck, the foundation, um, the foundation pieces, the inner building, which is just a little blue square, my roof parts, and all of the windows. So um, I, I will actually get to be able to go in and kind of edit these a little bit more inside the scan and cut, but I needed these files here first. So that is how you save things in an SVG file. So, you know, we talk about like, you don't have to have ProStitcher to use designer because, you know, maybe you have a long arm or you don't have a long arm. You could still use ProStitcher to um, create designs. Like these could be turned into stencils, but if you have a cutter, it opens a new world. This is a whole program that you can design your own cutouts. You can scan things with your scan and cut and then bring it in here and edit it or, um, come in, take a picture of an applique and um, trace your really intricate appliques and then have it send it over to your um, cutting machines. So I'm, I'm just super excited to see how this uh, turns out. So we'll see you back here in a second. All right, everyone, we are back and I am, I have my wool pressing mat under here. But again, when I asked the expert, he said, um, don't press on what you usually press on. Oh, it, my basement is so cold and it's like, I just want to heat my arms up. Um, he said, don't press what you usually press on because you will get some um, like residual uh, residue and such. So I just have other fabric. I have these random pieces of fabric that um, I probably bought for something, but I don't really remember what it was. So I'm going to use this to press on. So uh, we'll just take my first piece and they're still a little bit damp. So um, you're going to end up drying the rest of it with the iron. And I'm just going to iron this. It already looks so crazy. And you can you can actually kind of see it dry. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Holy cow. Tyrial magic. Made in Eugene, Oregon, I think. Holy crap. This is that's insane. Oh my gosh. And it does wash out. Not that I'm going to be washing this. It's a wall hanging or this is a bench pillow, but, um, I think it's just like any other starch. It'll wash out, wash out. So don't quote me be, again. First time, um, go follow, uh, the social, the social quilter and send him a message and say, does it wash out? This is crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to press the rest of these out and we'll be back. All right, everyone. So um, I think I'm going to split this video up into two. And the first part, we're going to end right now. Um, in case like you were like, I'm never going to use the scan and cut. I'm never going to use that. Um, maybe you'll use designer to do some other things. So that's how you could use um, the designer to set up those designs. Um, I'm going to do it like a part two. And part two will show you how I took those designs into what a brother has is their kind of editing software, which is called Canvas Workspace. Set it up and I will go and cut these. This, that material magic, seriously, it, look how... That would never happen with real fabric. Can you hear it? It's like a drum. Can you hit them together? It, it's, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never used this. But um, yeah, and oh, you, people, I've heard people will do this, like make labels. So you can run this through a printer now and print right onto it. I mean, it does, it feels like paper. I don't want to fold it because I'm going to use it in my cutter, but Holy moly, this is really cool. Um, I do see they, they have a little bit of a curve to them. So I'll probably iron them the other way. So um, so it curves towards the back because the back's going to be stuck down on that um, sheet. 
So I might hit them with the hot iron to iron uh, to curve them the other way. It might be my cut my rotor or my mat. I don't know. But um, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you try this if you have um, if you have a scan and cut and you have designer. If you don't. You can uh, ProStitcher.com and you can uh, purchase designer that way. Um, you can get a discount code from, wait, for designer, can you, oh no, you can, nope, that's, eh, discount code is for catalog. Um, but you can purchase the designer online. You can also call your local retailer and purchase it directly from them. Show them a little support and a little love. Um, especially right now, I would, I would call your retailer and say, hey, I want to get me some designer. Um. Some of them will just say order it online. The smart ones will say, okay, we'll get that right for you. So um, thanks for watching. As always, give me a thumbs up. Um, make sure you are following the channel. Uh, let's see, hit the bell icon so you're notified of new videos. And don't forget to like me on social media, Adam So Fun, and that's S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I know that last week, you know, I hit 2,000 followers on YouTube, so I gave away some fat quarters. What will I give away when we hit 3,000? I don't know, but everybody, just tell everyone to follow me so I can give away some good gifts. The, the higher the number, the better the stuff. So we'll see you in the next video, everyone, and um, look for part two if you want to see how this turns out. Bye.